consistency of the thyroid gland and also to see if it's symmetrical with the left and right sides and nodules. When the client is swallowing in this position, it will give you a more accurate ability to assess your palpatory findings. This test is to check for the Hohmann sign. This is indicative of a DVT, which is deep vein thrombrosis. Normally the client would come to you with some sort of throbbing or pain in the lower leg. It's for a calf DVT. Can you tell me which of your calf muscles you've been feeling pain in, Mark? Okay, so it's the lower calf, isn't it? Okay, so because it's the left one, we're always going to observe the good leg first. What you're going to do is you're going to look for any swelling, any redness, and then also have a look at the sore leg to compare. The next thing you're going to do is dorsiflex the foot after you've palpated. So you're going to do a light, very light palpation. Is there any pain in the good one? And I've been feeling for any swelling, heat, or tender or sign of tenderness. Then lift the leg and dorsiflex the foot. Is there any pain with that? Okay. Now we're going to check the leg where there has been tenderness for comparison. Very lightly palpate the calf. Is there any tenderness? Just slightly. Just slightly? Okay. Does it feel hot normally at all? Have you noticed? Raise the leg and then dorsiflex the foot. Keep an eye on the client's face. Any pain? Mm. There is? Mm. Thanks. The normal response is that the client will not feel pain on dorsiflexion. If there is pain excessively on dorsiflexion, this is indicative of DVT presence. We're now going to do an examination of the abdomen. I suggest that you drape the lower clothing of the client, and if it's a woman, also drape the upper clothing. You need to make sure that you expose the lower half of the abdomen as well when you're doing this examination. First of all, you do observation, followed by auscultation, percussion, then palpation. So we're going to start with observation. You're going to be looking at the abdominal area seeing if there's any protrusions or distension, looking for scars, dilated blood vessels, any masses of any sort. You can look from the end of the examination table to see if there's symmetrical presentation of the abdomen. And then you could also be at seated level, at eye level with the abdomen and checking if it is a symmetrical presentation. Notice any pulsations as well within the abdomen. The next thing you do is auscultation. You auscultate prior to percussion or palpation so that you don't disturb the motility of the gastrointestinal tract. What you're going to be auscultating for is for sounds of movement or motility of the peristaltic movement and waves. When you're looking at an abdomen, you're always going to put an imaginary line from the sternum down to the pubic symphysis and then a horizontal line from left to right cutting through or bisecting the umbilicus which is the belly button. When you do this you get four quadrants which is the right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, left lower and right lower quadrant. So you're going to auscultate in all four quadrants. You're going to be listening for gurgling high-pitched sounds. They should occur every 5 to 20 seconds in each quadrant. You're listening to see if the sounds or the peristaltic sounds are increased or decreased. They may be increased in such conditions as diarrhea or if someone has been using too many laxatives. 
and they may be decreased in conditions such as peritonitis. You should hear sounds in all four quadrants. If you find that you aren't hearing any peristaltic sounds in a quadrant, you may flick the abdominal wall to stimulate peristaltic sounds, then auscultate again to see if the sounds are present. Once you've finished auscultation, it's time to percuss the abdomen. Ensure that your client has emptied their bladder prior to percussion. You may ask them to bend their knees and place their feet on the examination table. Mark, can you do that for me? Bend your knees. In this position, the rectus abdominis muscle is relaxed. When you percuss the abdomen, you're going to percuss for the presence of fluid, gaseous distension, or masses. Percuss approximately three times in each quadrant. Predominantly on percussion, there is tympani. This is due to gas being in the small intestine and the large intestine, and also the gaseous bubble in the stomach area. Note that if a client is lying supine, if there is fluid, it will gravitate to the flanks, and if there is excess gas, it will gravitate centrally. Organs will percuss as dull, as will fluids, and hyperresonance may be apparent if there is excess gas in the abdominal cavity. We're now going to perform palpation, first a light palpation, then a deeper palpation. First ask the client where it is that they're experiencing pain or tenderness. Mark, where would it be that you're feeling pain or tenderness in your abdomen? In the lower left. Mark's pointed to the lower left quadrant, therefore that will be palpated last as not to cause the client any pain. Begin with moving the tissues just superficially, moving your hand about one centimetre into the tissue. You're going to be palpating for any tenderness, for any masses, and to check if there's any muscle guarding. Muscle guarding means that there's an involuntary tightening of the abdominal muscles. This is their body preventing you from palpating hard in an area. It's probably just too sore. Just be careful in the quadrant where the client has said that there was tenderness. No tenderness anywhere felt? Please let me know if there's any tenderness. Then you're going to do a deeper palpation. Use both hands to apply pressure. The bottom hand will be feeling the structures and the upper hand will be actually applying more of the pressure. You're going to go about five to eight centimetres deep. Again, feeling for tenderness, masses, Does that feel all right, Mark? Yeah. Ensure that when you're palpating the abdomen that you check the client's face. This is to ensure that you're aware as soon as they feel tenderness or pain. If you do identify a mass in any of the abdominal quadrants, you will need to document its size, its location, its consistency, its mobility, and if there are any pulsations. If there isn't a disease, there may be some sort of tenderness in the areas of the cecum, the colon, and the descending aorta. Now we're going to check the abdomen for rebound tenderness. Hold your hand vertically in the right lower quadrant, approximately three centimetres from the midline. Apply deep downward pressure to the abdomen and quickly release. Normally the client feels no pain and any abdominal pain is not aggravated. If it's positive, the sudden release of the pressure will cause the client to cry out or wince. The pain will occur in response to the stretching of the peritoneal layer of the peritoneal membrane. This could be a sign of peritonitis or appendicitis. Now we're going to palpate for the liver. The purpose of palpation of the liver is to see if you can feel the lower border. Place one hand under the ribs and then your fingers are going to be medially in the upper right hand quadrant. 
look at the client's face, ask them to breathe in, apply pressure and out. You're checking to see if you can feel the border of the liver. The liver is often not palpable. In some individuals, the edge of the liver may bump into your fingertips as the client breathes in. We're now going to talk about the characteristics of melanoma using the A, B, C, D and double E rules. So you'll start by looking at the mole and noticing A, which is asymmetry. You're going to notice if each half of the mole matches itself. You're also going to look for the border. You're going to check on the border if the edges of the mole are ragged or irregular. Also take a look at C for colour. When the colour of the mole varies throughout, this is indicative of a melanoma. D is for diameter. If the mole's diameter is more than, say, a pencil eraser's size, that would be a large mole and may be a melanoma. E is for elevation. Melanomas are almost always elevated. The second E is for enlargement. If there is a history for the mole to be increasing in size, this is also an indication of melanoma. This concludes the A, B, C, D, E, E characteristics of melanoma. For further information, have a look in your student guide which has some pictures. This is a test to check for the Phelan sign. To do this, ask the client to place their hands together like so, Mark, and just lightly press them together. I want you to just keep maintaining that. The client is to maintain the flexion of the wrist for about 60 seconds. We're checking to see if there's any pain down the hand or down the fingers, and if there's any numbness or tingling or possibly a burning sensation. Is that feeling all right, Mark? Yeah. Great. So you do that for one minute and relax. A positive Phelan sign is indicative of a carpal tunnel syndrome or RSI of the wrist area. This is predominantly in women and can be triggered off during pregnancy. This is your postural analysis physical examination. We will be using observation and palpation skills. We will use gait observation, anterior observation standing, lateral observation standing, posterior observation and palpation standing, posterior observation and palpation sitting, active range of motion, passive range of motion. First of all, we will start with observation of the gait. Look for the stance phase, heel strike, foot flat, push off, the swing phase, acceleration, deceleration, the arms. Look at the head, look at the shoulders and look at the feet to make sure that they are all straight. Observe the upper body, it should be relaxed. The head should face forward. The feet should walk one in front of the other. Look at the right arm with the left leg and vice versa. This is the interior observation standing. First of all we are going to look at the head on the neck. We are going to check to see that the head is forward facing and whether or not there is any left or right rotation of the head or tilting. Next we go down to the ear levels, so we are going to check the distance between the ears, the bottom of the ear lobe, to the distance at the top of the shoulder. We are going to check bilaterally if there is any superior or inferior imbalance. Next is the shoulder level, again we are going to check bilateral comparison of superior or inferior imbalance. After the shoulder level is checked, we will go down to the client's feet. At the feet here, we are going to check